Q&A session. And now we should also have Terhi and Patricia joining us on the stage. Are you able to share your screens? Because we are going to discuss about the governance, API management, and identity management, because you all three brought new viewpoints on this topic. But let's wait to get Terhi and Patricia joining too. Uh, by the way, do you have any questions in the meantime for Eric? You are welcome to add add to the chat. Okay, now we have Patricia joining. Hi. Oh, Robert the Poli is saying that clap, Eric, always interesting insights. And now we have Terry joining. So thank you, first of all, for all of three of you. You had really unique insights into the API. And I would like to first ask all of you a question about the freedom versus control in relation to the governance and API management and identity management. What is your viewpoint? Would you have more freedom for developers, for teams, or would you be more on the governance side, more stricter control? Let's go in the order speaking. So first Terhi, then Patricia, then Eric. So Terhi, how do you see this topic? Mm -hmm. Freedom over control. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes, very good. Um, I think uh, it requires a lot of freedom for the developers, but uh, I think the developers should uh, at the same time have a kind of uh, vision or like, uh, I don't know, clear, clear direction where we want to like uh, have our APIs. I think it's like, well, more freedom, but at the same time, <laughs> governance, it's really hard to say. It's like a balance. How do you balance yeah. these things? Yeah. And Patricia, how do you see the balance between the two? Uh, I think you actually do need that balance because you need to give them freedom and make sure that they are compliant. So the governance is always needed. I actually enjoyed a lot the idea of Eric that having an API that actually can allow you and can help you to control that governance because then the idea is that they do have the freedom but you are controlling the way um, that the things are done to make sure. Uh, so if you have an API to control that governance, they do get the freedom, but you have the automatic then governance already in the first stage. So I think you need the balance and you need a way to do it. And I actually liked a lot Eric's idea. So that's the kind of the thin line between control and the freedom. Correct. Um, Eric, how do you see this topic? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with uh, Patricia. I mean, in the end, right? I mean, you, you want basically you want them to give as much freedom as you can get away with, right? so yes. so that they can do their work in the best possible way for them without doing anything that's that's a bad idea for the organization. So I think this this fine line, and, and traditionally, I think right, everything was more slanted towards the idea of um, constraining teams too much. So I think right now it's really important to try to say, okay, like which rules do we really need and which rules were just in place of some bizarre IT history that we have, but there's really no reason other than, well, this is how we do things around here. So mm -hmm. I think if, if you can separate those things and really check all constraints, basically, right? Whenever a team com complains about, we spend a lot of time with this, really carefully have a look, do they need to, and like, is that a reasonable thing to spend time with? Or could we just say, okay, you know, just like, let's, let's do it differently if that works for you. So. Indeed, uh, I have a kind of question. How do you put in the customer's perspective when the customer is using APIs for, 
from organization and you have multiple teams building the APIs, how do you make sure that you will get one similar API from the organization for the customer? So let's start again with Terhi. How do you ensure kind of the integrity and the similarity of the API from the end user point of view? Mm -hmm. mm, I think it requires uh, some kind of, well, um, uh, product, uh, product management, product ownership, of course, uh, to have the guidelines uh, for the API development. This is how, how like uh, we should have some kind of guidelines how to develop the APIs and what are the principles there. I think it let's start with that. Indeed, those are very important. And um, Patricia, do you see this? Uh, I think for the end user, it needs to be um, the easiest user friendly possible. So for the end customer, they just want to have the access and to be able to manage it in an easy way. So what you need is take out that complexity from the end user, but ensuring that you still have all that you need in terms of security and governance behind it. Uh, so I think the idea is to make it as simple as possible from an end user perspective. Uh, without losing the control of what you have behind. But it is it is more and more important that it's user-friendly and easy to use from a customer perspective. And also the developers are end users too. So Eric, exactly. how do you see, see this one? Yeah, sure. For, but I mean, the point is like recently, it was, it was funny, like recently I, I just made a little video talking about private partner and public APIs and that I think they should maybe not be designed in the same way because you have different groups of consumers and you know they may have different preferences and use cases, blah, blah, blah. And some people really pushed back hard on that and said like, no, like, they always have to be designed in the same way. So, but by now I think, you know, it's, um, for, for example, right? If you design a public API that you really want to make money with, you probably have to design that like as aggressively user-friendly as you can. And it will be really hard and it will take a lot of time and money. But if that is a product that you think will generate a lot of revenue, right, that's what you do. But that's kind of like a little isolated thing, right, where you say we do whatever it takes. And it's very different, for for example, for, for internal APIs, right, where you say that, like, we have a 1,000 APIs. We can't spend, like, a year optimizing each of those. So we create guidelines. We have best practices, right? And those may shift over time. But by and large, we hope that they all have a similar look and feel, and that's kind of as good as it gets. And I think there it's really also a question of, like, what's the value that you can attribute to an API? And for, for those, like, really singular APIs that will drive a lot of value, I think you will you will have a very different design exercise than you will have for your know, tons of kind of back end APIs that only your internal developers will ever see, and mm -hmm. where you probably don't need as much um, of a refined design to make them useful. Uh, that's really true. So the use of the API is kind of the driving thing here. That how much effort you put into the governance. Because I guess the APIs internals meant for, for example, for the user interface only, it's still okay to do it with as much freedom as possible. But once you are dealing with the developer who is outside your organization, then you'd want to have more stricter governance. Oh. I don't know if it's me, but I can't hear Eric. Sorry, sorry. That's basically <laughs> how, how GraphQL came into existence, right? Where they said, basically, it's a, it's a backend for frontend, right? They said, how can you build the best API for this specific use case, right? An API that feeds our UI. How can we do the best possible API there? And they went through a huge, I mean, they invented a new API language for this, right? So, but that was a very specific use case, right? Where they basically said, well, our customers are our front end developers and they're complaining about some very specific issues they have. How can we do it better? 
right? And that was, I mean, if if you could if you could put a number on how much money Facebook spent on developing GraphQL, that's probably a very impressive number. <laughs> but for Indeed. that, of course, right, that API, even though it has only very few consumers, right, the developers, that API basically drives all of their revenue, right? So they said, well, whatever it takes. And it takes a couple of years and a new language, but I think now they're happy. I'm actually happy that this was the first time that technology was really mentioned here in this track because um, quite often we talk about the uh, GraphQL, we talk about the mess, we talk about the uh, technology, but now we have been really focusing on talking about uh, how to really use and move the APIs forward. When you are starting, if you are starting just with the API development, would you put more focus first on choosing the technologies or would you put more focus on on the management governance issues? Let's make a round discussion again. So, Tervi, what's your view on this one? For a new organization, where would you put your money first? <laughs> hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think that I would probably, um, of course, the technology is really important, the choose of that. Uh, but I think that the management and governance uh, is really, really important to probably that way through the management and governance, we should probably uh, ease the choose of technology later on, or I don't know, it's a really difficult question, <laughs> but probably that way, yeah. It might be easier to start with already with the, some kind of management when you have only a small set of APIs. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. start growing up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Patricia, how do you see this? Um, again, I think it's not about putting money on one or the other, but it's about the balancing on the costs along the, the journey, right? So I would start with management because normally you already have your standards and your rules. So having that documented and having a base to start. So I would start on the management and governance as a base and then uh, follow up this basic guidelines, starting with the development and then reviewing the governance more later on the way. But you need to have something to start and you need to have some guidelines to start and some standards because otherwise the developers will have, in this case, too much freedom. <laughs> and then they have to go back to actually fix because they didn't know there was a constraint. So I think you actually need uh, first a bit of governance. You don't need to go the full extent, but to have some standards and some guidelines, start developing and then review if it's a uh, fit to what you have and if you need to make any further adjustments. Uh, that sounds a good way to move forward. Um, Eric, how do you see this? I, I don't know. I think you first have to look at where you are. So sometimes I think actually the the most important place where you would put your initial money and efforts would be culture. To you know to really make sure that teams are willing to share stuff. I mean sometimes teams are basically aggressively not doing APIs. You know saying it's like you know it's all mine. And, and teams don't want to use other stuff because they like building their own stuff. And so sometimes I think culture is actually holding back things a lot. So then building APIs, you know, if people don't use APIs, you don't even need to build them. You know, it's a, like there's no point. So I think if you, if you don't start with culture at the very least, making sure that there is some momentum that things need to communicate more easily and people are waiting for something to become available, I think then you may just see what, what we see in a lot of organizations where you have really good IT teams that build API platforms and publish APIs and nobody uses it, right? And they're sitting there and wondering, what's up? <laughs> Why doesn't anybody use that? It's good stuff. And, and then you start digging into, you know, like, all the different departments and how they're managed and they have their own little fiefdoms and it's so I think really culture actually is also really important to look at, you know, are we even at the structurally at the right place to embrace that and start moving forward with it? And that's actually very true. So the culture needs to come first and then you can only start introducing the 
technologies because technology can change and I think the culture is the more longer term thing. And technology, you know, really is not, I mean, very rarely do you see an API, I would say, succeeding or failing because of technology, right? I mean, people may complain that it's not nicely designed, but if it's valuable, you know, if you get access to good stuff, they put up with a lot of bad design, right? So, so thinking that the more you polish the thing, um, the, the more successful it will be, I think there's there, very quickly you, you reach the area of diminishing returns where you can say, it's okay, it needs to be good enough, um, but we really don't need to obsess over technology to turn it into the best API the world has ever seen. Uh, that's a very good guidance for everybody. Um, there was a comment on, on chat from Serkan Tetik, who also talks about the freedom based on standards and common rules. And this is the conclusion also from this joint, joint discussion. Um, I think we don't have any new questions on chat, but do you have any things you still want to say which I should have asked you before? No, just thanks for organizing this. It's great. Thank you so much for speakers and all the participants. This was very, very good intake into the API management, API identity management, customer sales service and API governance. So thank you so much and we are going thank to have you.